right, guys. Welcome back to the Pulse of Willie and Al. How's it going today, bro? Not bad, man. Not bad. You know, it's uh, it's sunny out here in uh, good old New Hampshire. Uh, it's getting a little cold, which I it's my favorite time of year. So yeah, I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm Gucci right now. I'm feeling good, yeah. man. Um, yeah, guys, th thanks for tuning in uh, to the Pulse of Willie and Al. We got uh, episode 58 today. This episode's name is Willie is Irate. And that's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm pissed today. My team is out and we're going to we're going to talk about some some real stuff today. So uh, <laughs> it may be a little bit of a different episode today, but uh, Will, Willie's going to be pissed and, and we're, we're going to go. So uh, really the question is, how high can we get Willie's blood pressure? That's really yeah, the it's, it's been high the last week, let's just say so. Uh, but let's, let's start out and, uh, get through some of this stuff in the NFL. Cause there is stuff I'm oh. pissed about in the NFL as well. So, uh, first thing, breaking news we've got that j literally just dropped, uh, Robert Sala gets fired and, uh, Sala makes me so happy. Yeah. 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 Makes me so happy. Um, you know, it's, I hate the jets with, I hate the jets on par with how much I hate the Yankees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it just makes me happy when the jets continue to be just a fucked up franchise yeah um yeah and it and really for the record robert Sala wasn't a good head coach he wasn't he's a good d coordinator excellent d coordinator and we, we we've seen this time and time again you know the list goes no. through uh, unfortunately a lot of new england patriots coaches from the bill belichick tree were excellent coordinators and maybe not the best oh, uh, head coach you can't, you can't copy genius like you can't. Like, yeah, that's it's, not a it's a little difficult to do, right? So, uh, but you know, I just want to point out one one thing that I find kind of funny about this is, you know, they they played in London this past weekend. So, Sam Darnold beats them, former Jet, and that's gotta hurt bad. You know, like it really does. But like, my question is, did Robert Sala did did he get on the plane back, or did he just choose to stay in London? Well, he has like seventy-two kids. Uh, yep. Slightly exaggerated. I think he has like seven. But like, yeah. Uh, yeah. The fact that the, in this NFL season, Sam Darnold was the last guy to beat the Jets and get them fired is <laughs> what really tells me that one of two things: a) this is probably the weirdest NFL season I've ever seen; b) the apocalypse might actually be coming. Well, dude, and I, I just want to check just to make sure I I don't get this wrong, but. Um, how epic would it have been if, uh, you know, the, the previous week, because they, the Jets lost to Denver, did they not? Yeah. They yeah. Lost, it, yeah the last 10 to nine Dallas, head coaching career is probably going to be, he lost to Bo Nix and, and Sam Darnold. Yeah. But imagine if Wilson was in there, how epic that would have been. Golly. It would have been ridiculous. So I don't know, man. I, I just, I look at it. I don't know where the jets go from here. I don't know who's taken over for them. They'll probably decide that within the next day or so, but uh, you know, maybe things get better, but maybe they get worse. Uh, they just, well, they, like, Brees Hall does not look like Brees Hall this year. Uh, it's and rough, Aaron Rodgers. Like, I, I know that he looked all right, but Aaron Rodgers looks very much like a dude that's 40 years old that's coming off an Achilles injury. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I don't know how you change that, like, w what happens, right? Like, he's very un uncharacteristic of him, but he threw three picks on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, su Sunday, I'm sorry, Sunday. Uh, that just, that's not really what he does. So it's just yeah. they they've got issues all over that they, they got to get figured out. We still don't even know about uh, they still have one, Hassan Reddick still is not reported. Like what is going on with this? He's just losing it, a million uh, like a million bucks a week and just whatever mailing it in. You know, for as much as things change, I can always count on the Jets for being a messed up franchise, mm -hmm. and that you know that brings me joy. Yeah, that brings me joy because. Right now, I, I'm, you know, dreading the fact that there's a world where the Yankees win the World Series this year. And I, I can't I can't live with that. Yeah, I can't. Uh, my life is barely hanging on by a thread. <laughs> I, I cannot take the Yankees winning a World Series. Yeah. I cannot take that. Well, we're, we're going to touch on that in a little bit and stuff. But uh, l let's move on, right? We got your boy, Kirk Cuckins. Uh You like that? You like that? <laughs> you know what I would like from Kirk Cuckins? What? If 
you know, out of the 506 yards he threw for, yeah, you know, only 16 of those went to B. John Robinson. Who yeah, have in our league. Yeah, you're you know how angry that makes me. Yeah, and you know what? I didn't start Kyle Pitts because he had zero yards the week before, and I was yep. like, I'm done with this guy. Yep. Listen, that's yeah. been you, what you're feeling this year. Uh, I mean, you, we got, I got one good game out of him this week, but like what you're feeling this year has been the uh, perennial pain that all fantasy owners have had the last two seasons after, yeah. you know, his rookie year. So, uh, but I, I just yeah. want to, in, in all seriousness, listen, I'm a big Kirk Cousins fan. I, I love him. We, we've talked I'm about starting, that. He's starting to grow on He's starting to grow on Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, there is definitely not a quarterback dispute in Atlanta. Definitely not. So put that shit to bed right now. Uh, his performance was epic, man. It really was. And, yeah. and what and what usually is kind of a snore fest on Thursdays. That was an epic game. And I'm that's one of the that's one of the better Thursday games I've watched in a while. Yeah, I'm feeling great. And it's not like the Bucks got uh, played poorly. They just got outplayed in no. the second half. You know, it's just yeah. you know it was all Bucks in the first half. And, and the Falcons kind of hanging in there. And then all of a sudden, they just came on. And I, I'm looking. I'm like, no way. I'm getting up, getting ready for school. I'm looking. I'm like, no way, dude. Like, this game's tied. It's going in overtime. What? Yeah. So it yeah. ended up being, being a great game. But I just, I don't know. I'm feeling good about the Falcons, man. They beat some good teams. And I, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of them this year. Yeah, I... They play in the NFC South. So mm-hmm. that division gets is always kind of weird and this year is no exception like yeah it's really tampa and atlanta it seems like at this point new orleans has kind of since fallen off and car uh, cars with the uh, got the oblique injury they're going to get an mri on him but yeah, yeah. It, it, they, they've yeah. taken a step back a little bit um but like i you know for the things i i've always kind of dunked on kirk cousins like he will at least in the regular season he's gonna get you wins yeah. Well, they got a deep, they got a serious defense there, man. They, that yeah. really, yeah, they gave up some points. I get that, but like they know how to force turnovers there. And they're, they made some good moves with Judon and Jesse Bates. Uh, I say Jesse Bates two years ago, but Justin Simmons bringing him in. Yeah. Oh, man. Like that's, it, that's a squad. Be, listen to you. They sh- really should be four and one because they kind of, they played, they hung with Kansas City tough. Yeah, they did. They, they really definitely did. did. Like, Oh man! And then the other game they lost was that Steelers game, which like the yeah. Steelers defense is pretty okay. Yeah, and it's uh, it's weird too. Like I, I don't know. I thought the Steelers defense was good, and then they got blown up by Indy. So I don't I don't really know. And then yeah, Indy loses to Jacksonville. So it's like <laughs> it's it's wild. But anyhow, so uh, yeah. I I got to ask you, which was worse this week, the end of the Ravens Bengals game or the end of the Bills Texans game? Um, I think the end of the Bills Texans game because. The last five minutes of that, of the fourth quarter of that Ravens game in overtime was just nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, I'm going to answer your first question about the, the Bill, because like the Bills had a chance to just kind of run out the clock, and they didn't. And like Sean McDermott after the game talks about, he's like, that's on me. That was bad coach. And like you rarely hear that. Yeah. Where a coach is like, that's on me. Um, but Sean McDermott does these weird things, and you're like, what's going on? Also, Side note, Josh Allen had no business playing in that game after what clearly looked like he got knocked out. Yeah, a concussion, right? Like, yeah, uh, and they were like, oh, he sprained his ankle. I'm like, ah. Uh, I, I watched his head bounce off the field like a basketball. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Twice. Bounced, On that, then, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Uh, and Houston's just, Houston's kind of doing just enough. Like, yeah. Like, CJ Stroud, like, the moment he got the ball, I was like, oh, he's going to. All he needs to do is kind of really get this to like the 50, and that's it. That's all he needs. Yeah. And CJ Stroud did exactly that. Um, I do worry with the Texans that Nico Collins injury. Yeah, that's because they're a different team without him. But uh don't forget last year I think he was banged up for a little bit and they had Tank Dell yeah. and and you know, maybe we see the emergence of Tank Dell now and, and Stefan maybe you know kicks outside and you know, we yeah. he's, Joe Mixon should be coming back soon from that high ankle sprain, which you know, had he not have that hip drop tackle, we could be looking at like him being the leader yeah. rusher in the NFL right now. Like he's oh for sure, yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that Bills Texans game was awful. Yeah, I, I just the Ravens Bengals game was just two teams that didn't want to play defense. 
And then Lamar Jackson having an out-of-body experience at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah, I just, I don't know. For for me, and just to answer my own question, right? Like, the, the, it was the Bengals game for me. And and, and not, yeah. like, I was real mad about this. And, like, it, part of the reason is I just don't want to imagine a playoffs this year without Joe Burrow. Like, everything's gone wrong the last three years for them since they went to the Super Bowl. I just want to see them kind of figure it out, right? I, I yeah. want to see them figure it out, put it together. Jamar Chase was just electric. Uh, Chase and Higgins both. Like, yeah, they, yeah. When you see- when that Bengals offense is clicking, mm-hmm. that's that's the team that I know that you believe in. And so I'm like, oh, yeah. Because the Bengals offense is unstoppable. With yeah, Chase dude, and dude, Chase was definitely scooped up by like three or four Ravens, and somehow he ends up running away from them and yeah. scoring that long touchdown. I'm like, how is this happening right now? I mean, I loved it. I had him in fantasy, but just, I don't know, man. I, I felt crushed for them. And it wasn't even McPherson. People, I don't know. See, this is where that's I feel a bad, like. That was yeah, a bad hold. Yeah, I feel like, and, and that really stinks too for that guy because he knew it was his fault at that point. The next play, Henry runs 50 yards and they basically set it up and, and run Justin Tucker out there. But this is the thing that yeah. bugs me. It's like, yeah, the Ravens got back in that game because the Bengals weren't playing good defense. I am going to stand on this hill and claim it. The Ravens are not a good football team. I'm sick of like them beating teams and b- people being like, oh my God, we need to crown Lamar Jackson. We need to crown Derrick Henry. Dude, this, this offensive line is very different than it was last year. This defense has sucked for the better part of the season. I'm sick of people being like, oh yeah, this is a great team. They're not a great team, man. They snuck back in this game. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say a team that's rushing for almost 200 yards a game. Yeah, okay. Can't say that's not a good team. I, I'm just saying that there's there's two sides to the football, right? And yeah. on defense, when they're letting up as many points as they are, I, I'm sorry, but that's just not not great, man. I'm I'm so glad they figured out how to run the ball. Awesome. And I, they're listen, running for 211 yards a game. Yeah, and listen, I'm a Derrick Henry fan. Uh, I'm not. I mean, yeah. I'm not, and I'm a Lamar fan too. I'm not against those guys, but it's going to take more than running the ball against the Bengals, who people have been able to run the ball all year against, right? Like they're going to have to do more when the, when it gets to the the tight games against Kansas City, they're going to have to do more. And I just, I don't, I don't know. We're going to find out a lot more about this team, and maybe I'm going to be eating crow at the end of the year. But I'm telling you, like, I just don't think they're that good. I really I, don't, I man. Think- I think when like it comes nut crunching time in the playoffs, I, I think because that's the only time that that's all that matters. Yeah, it's like Baltimore's kind of all in this year. They're like, hey, we went out, we got the one of the best running backs in the league. Are they all in though? They let so many of their linemen go. They let so many pieces go on defense. Yeah, like I don't know. For me, it's just I. I don't know, man. I'm not seeing great football being played out of that team. Not as not the way, not compared to last year. And that's the problem. Maybe I have recency bias, man. But yeah, I'm looking I mean, at this the, team compared to last year, and I'm like, no, this team's not that good. Number one offense in the league, man. Like, yeah. And I, I don't know. And I, can we just can we just quickly? I know you're kind of off the Ravens. Can we just quickly talk about the play where? In fourth quarter, they're down 10, five and a minute to change left. Mm-hmm. Baltimore snaps it. Lamar fucks up the snap. <laughs> drops it. Runs it about 20 yards backwards. Stiff arms a D lineman three times. Yeah. Stiff arms him to the ground. And bounced off and of him, cool. kind of, like just with yeah, his and hand. Curls a dart to likely for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know. Like, He's insane, dude. Like, He's a great player. I just. I don't know. Maybe what do you, that's. What do you do in that situation? I just think that type of play is not sustainable, man. Like we know the way it gets in the winter time. You don't. You don't have the ability in winter to be able to make those types of plays. And yeah, they're running the ball well now. How's it going to be months from now, right? When they're playing against better defenses, not defenses that are giving up 150 plus yards on the ground. The last two weeks, they've no. looked amazing running the ball. Who have they ran, ran against? The Bengals and the Cowboys. Dude, you I could hand you the ball and you could run for 200 yards against the Cowboys. Actually, last two weeks ago was the Bills. And the Bills uh, was it? Point. Were they playing the Cowboys before the week before that? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And the Bills, like they've let up yards on the ground too, though. Like it's yeah. I I don't know. I I just yeah. 
We'll see. Every time we think we know a team, somehow they get smoked by another team. We thought like, oh yeah, that team's not that good. I, I think that's why this week with Baltimore, they're playing the Commanders, and that's going to be a weirdly interesting game. Yeah, spe- it's it's a great segue too because I yeah I got to ask you, man. Like, are the Commanders one of the best teams in the NFC? Like, I think we're going to find out this week. Um, but well, so the Commanders and the Ravens are the same team. They both run. The, they're the top two in rushing Ooh. as a team. Washington runs for 178 yards on the ground. Mm-hmm. They're the, they're the same team. Like they both have kind of garbage offensive lines. Their defenses are like not great. The only problem is is like Washington scores on every possession, mm-hmm. so like it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, based on what I've seen, and granted, like it's a very small sample size, right? Um, yeah. and I, listen, I know you weren't, and I'm not going to say you weren't high on him, but like, he wasn't your guy that you were looking at coming out of college. Cause you thought maybe no. he was too small for the NFL, but like, he's done very well, man. Jaden Daniels has been awesome this year. Like it, yeah. it's, it's been really good. And what they're doing with Dan Quinn there is working. It's, I think he's a better thrower of the football from what we've seen so far, but Lamar has more elusivity, I guess you could say, uh, when he's got the ball in his hands. So hear, hear me out with the commanders. They haven't, I don't think they've beaten anybody good. Okay. Because the, the one team you could say was kind of good was the Bengals, but like the Bengals are one and four, man. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and so I think, I think for me, if they can beat Baltimore this week, I think I can start taking them a little more seriously. Well, well watch this. Watch what's going to happen. I'm going to go on. I took this take on the Ravens and stuff. It's going to be 48 to three Ravens. And I'm going to have to yeah. go, come in yeah. and be embarrassed and stuff. But uh, I just, I don't know. Jaden Daniels has been fun to watch this year for me. I, I've really yeah. enjoyed it. And Lamar too. Like I'm not, I, again, I'm not bashing the, the Ravens. I just don't think they're as good as they're showing right now. Um, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens within the next coming weeks. Yeah. But. And I think with Washington, I think that they, because the Ravens have more talent. There's, there's no denying that they yeah. have more talent on both sides of the ball than Washington does. Yeah. And I, and I think that like with Washington right now, they're, I, I think offensively they're, they're just lights out right now, but they're also like after this, they have like three more pretty cupcake games mm-hmm. and then their schedule gets hard. Yeah, well, so this is the thing. They're going to have to build a good lead in terms of wins in the division, which they're doing right now. Uh, but I see the the big the big thing that they uh, – the big test for them is going to be going against Philly. And then there's going to be give-me games that are going to be very tough for them to win because divisional yeah. games are tough, man. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Dallas and Dallas is having a bad year or the Giants. We just saw what happened with the Giants in Seattle, right? Like, Seattle goes yeah. out, and, and it's it's not that they underestimated them. The Giants just played up, and that was with without Malik Neighbors and Singletary. You know, like, I mean, it's kind of, they're playing with backups and they beat Seattle, which I, you know, we don't think that's going to happen, but I just, yeah. you're right. It's a big test this week for the commanders and we'll, we'll kind of see how they handle it going forward. They have a two game stretch in November where it's, it's Dallas and it's Philadelphia and Dallas back to back. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a real telling of like what this team actually is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. But All until right. then, like. I, I'm loving watching Washington put up points. Dude, they're must it's, watch must watch football on yeah. Sunday. It's it's and they're re- just torching teams. They're yeah. not even like yeah. they're not even like skirting by teams. They're well, just beating their pants off. What they teams. did to Arizona two weeks ago was a, yeah. was an embarrassment. And then Arizona turns around and beats San Francisco. So it's like we don't what is what? One plus one is not two anymore. It's no. it's insane. But that's why like I have no idea like like I know Kansas City's five and zero. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like I understand that. I understand the Vikings are five and zero, oh, but like I don't know that either of those teams are like they can be beat. How good they are? They definitely can like, be beat. Uh, but yeah. we're gonna get into them in a second because I just want to cover the Jags real quick. You know they get their first win. Uh, flowers for Peterson, but like 
uh, of course it's over the Colts, but the, the, the real, <laughs> the real question I want to ask you about this, and, and this is why we're having this conversation about like kind of what is what and who's good and who's not in the NFL, because the Colts get beat by the Jags here who were the last winless team. And the week before the Colts beat the Steelers. So it's like, you know, in my mind, like I, I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, Anthony Richardson, he's hurt again. Jonathan Taylor was out this week. But in my mind, I'm starting to think like, okay, is Flacco better? Are, are the Colts better with Flacco than they are Richardson? Because it's starting to feel that way. Well, I think there's two things. One, Richardson's quickly getting the injury prone kind of he's a guy that can't stay healthy. Yeah. And that's quickly becoming his kind of thing. And that's not great. Nope. Um, that being said, the loss against Jacksonville, like I'm going to say a weird thing. That was, that was kind of a, like a good loss for them because like for, cause you're right. Cause they didn't have Richardson. They didn't have Jonathan Taylor and they still kind of hung. They still hung with Jacksonville. Yeah, they did. Um, and Jacksonville has a lot of talent. They're just, mm-hmm. they have a kind of terrible quarterback and not a good coach. Like, yeah. Um, I'm not sure Trevor Lawrence is terrible, but I definitely don't see him right now in the top half of quarterbacks. And that's sad, right? For a, for a guy that's getting 200 plus million dollars. Like, he should be better. It should be playing yeah. better. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, but I, I think for Flacco, like Flacco's a veteran. He's won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Like it can't he, be underrated, man. Yeah. Like in this kind of this run that he's kind of been on the last two years, because I think he was a borderline Hall of Fame candidate before. I think this is kind of like solidifying it for him that like he's gone to multiple just, organizations and found success, right? It's, yeah. Like I, I think the Colts are a young team and he's that veteran lead. He's that veteran leadership that they need. And think about the other quarterbacks that went to the Colts that were veterans that didn't have success, like Matt Ryan, Phillip Rivers, you know, Carson Wentz. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of guys, right? It's I forgot you guys have burned through a lot of quarterbacks since Andrew Luck. A I lot. I keep forgetting that. A lot, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so let's talk about something good, right, before I get real upset here. So uh, Vi- <laughs> Vikings, listen, they're 5-0. and Chiefs are 5-0 and as well. Um, which team is better and why you know i watched a lot of the chiefs game last night and i first of all there was a chiefs d lineman shout out to him got a pick in the end zone and then ran it back 40 yards yeah shout out to the fat guys getting interceptions and running love Love it. it love to see that uh you know the chiefs mahomes like if you looked at the stats you're like boy threw for 300 plus yards didn't throw a touchdown but like he did just enough. Yeah. And that's and the Chiefs, like, they know how to win because they've been here so many times before. Kareem Hunt, man. I told yeah. people. You said it. You said it. And I was like, fuck. I, yeah. I watched my game and I was like, you know what? Maybe Kareem Hunt's available in our leagues. I, you had him in both. And Every like, single league him. I picked him up yeah. in. Every yeah. single league. So it's because I just knew, dude. I knew it. And I, yeah. I even said it on my podcast on Sunday. People were dropping their pants uh, for like, on fab for Carson Steele and what did he do he fumbled his dreams away and then he gets another yeah, fumble in this game he didn't lose it but he fumbled again and it's like dude they're not going to trust him to yeah. do it they're just going to give Hunt more and more carries he almost got 30 carries in the game dude he finished yeah. with 28 carries it's it's wild and that guy was out of football no one wanted him so yeah. it's just but I, you brought up something kind of interesting, now, like talking about Mahomes, and I know they've. It seems like each time they're going to win a Super Bowl, they like figure out something, a different way to be able to do it. And I, so I was looking at the matchup yesterday, uh, before the game had started, and mm-hmm. Mahomes had six touchdowns and five picks on the year. And the reason I brought that up is because now he's actually got the same amount of touchdowns as interceptions on the season. Yeah. And it's that's, that's even more even more interesting. This team's undefeated. And when you look at that, like how many teams do you know where the quarterback could g- throw six touchdowns on the season and six picks and they'd be undefeated? Very few, man. Yeah. Like it's very few. And even like, you know, I ask you about the Vikings, right? We compare that to Darnold. 
he's got 11 touchdowns to four interceptions. So it's just like, we can look at it and say, like, obviously Mahomes is the better quarterback. But statistically this year, he's playing like hot garbage, man. It's really, he's doing just enough in every game. But six six turnovers for him, that's a season's worth of turnovers. Yeah, you know, like last night they... It was Kareem Hunt, and then they got a huge game from Juju Smith-Schuster, of all people. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the <laughs> old, old, bring in the old, and, you know, let's see. Get and the Kelsey band back had, together, baby. And Kelsey had nine for 70. Yep. My, I called that this week, too. I was like, yo, Kelsey's going to have yeah. his best game of the season. So, feeling good Xavier about Worthy that. Had a t- Xavier Worthy, like, played all right. Like, they just, yeah. they just have enough guys that just buy into this system it's Mm -hmm. you know what it kind of reminds me of it's like the patriots of the like early 2000s where like it was just brady and dudes well and and the interest i mean they have a little more talent than the patriots did at that point but you know the the interesting part and there's been talk with Devontae adams wanting to get traded and stuff like that but just let me just put that to rest the chiefs are not trading for Devontae adams uh, they don't have the cap room for him unless they give nope. up something big. They don't have the cap room for him, man. They can't afford him. I think they've got I, five million right now. Yeah, I, I. If you're the Chiefs, though, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of play devil's advocate here. But if you're the Chiefs, and if you can somehow make that happen, wouldn't you? Yeah, I see them making more of a move like for DeAndre Hopkins, who they tried to get last season um yeah. i could see that happening i see the gm making a move for for with the jets talk about them again for a second like i i, I could see them going after Devonte, but i just don't see the chiefs also, doing it <laughs> i also don't see the raiders trading Devonte to an interdivision opponent no There's no no, 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 no. That's, that's that's kind of off limits there that's yeah and they're not going to help them to do anything right like it's you know they don't want to yeah, do that the chiefs and the chiefs and raiders hate each other like yeah. there's no way that's uh, no way. I wanted to just mention something about the Vikings because a lot of people are sleeping on Justin Jefferson in the beginning. They, dude, they've got – I know it's like week six we're going into. TJ Hawkinson is coming back, man. Yeah. Um, that's and Jordan a, Addison came back last week. Jordan Addison looking, looked good. You know, right. Yeah. Like it's – this is a team. They run the ball well. Yeah, Aaron Jones is banged up, but Ty Chandler was in there. Um, You know, it wasn't great. The Jets' defense is pretty tough, but – the Vikings are looking pretty good, man. And I, I, I'll i tell you, like, Darnold is, it may be one of those Purdy situations, right? And I'm not saying he's Brock Purdy, but what I'm saying is he may just need to do enough and he's got the playmakers to be able to do it. He's a good thrower of the football. He just yeah. needs to be able to get the time to make those decisions. And I, I think he's he's shown that he's making good decisions. Yeah, he, he had a couple picks this year that were kind of head scratchers a little bit, but a lot of them, he's out there trying to make plays. And I, I don't know, you're I'd rather a quarterback throw a pick trying to step up and make a play than yeah. them just throwing it up like Will Levis. I, I will say this about Sam Darnold. This was the first week in the second half of that game, he looked like the old Sam Darnold. Yeah, he started he to, but they, they still yeah. won the game. They still won the game, and the Jets are a good second-half team. They tighten things up quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it's tough, man. Yeah. It really is. The The big news for them is they get – if and what's concerning about the Vikings is if they don't get off to a strong start. This is the second time they've let teams kind of climb back in games. We saw it against the Packers. Now the Jets climb back in it, and you're kind of nervous there at the end. They need to be able to figure out how to be able to close that coffin, right, and, yeah. and end the game. But And luckily, like, he had to throw to Jefferson at the end to kind of seal it. And, like, yeah. that's kind of the thing with the Vikings is, like, you have a guy like Justin Jefferson, sometimes it kind of doesn't matter. Like, yeah. He's going to get open, and he's going to seal the game for you. Yeah, absolutely, you man. You just have to throw it kind of in his vicinity. Yeah, Kirk Cousins knows that. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, anything else you wanted to mention before we hop into uh, baseball here? No, I, uh, you know, shout out to the Patriots again. Um, where uh, I, I don't know if Gerard Mayo is a good coach. I'm going to say that the way they kind of bungled the end of that first half and maybe he's just a rookie head coach and like, but I just, it's tough when you compare it to Belichick, right? Like yeah. it's, it's and very I, I difficult. Like the guy coming after Belichick, I'm always going to be like, ah, I don't know, man. But like, 
you can't start Drake May. That's all I know is like our offensive line can't block anybody. Yeah. And I know people are like calling for Drake May, but you just can't do that. Like, you're going to kill that guy's confidence. People in B team chat calling for Drake May. And I'm like, oh, you guys yeah, don't I saw know. That. You guys just don't Shout know. Out to say, I like, like that. No. He's going to get no. killed, man. He's going to get killed. So, yeah. yeah. It's, I don't but, know. Uh, it's going to take time. It's fun. Um, I I forgot what it was like to root for a bad football team. Um, <laughs> so that's that's a fun experience every week. Yeah. I uh, I I spend three hours just kind of being dejected about the Patriots, and uh, it's good. It's I can good. let you know I'm a Colts fan, man. I'll let you know what it's like yeah. rooting for. A... No, you guys have been bad for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's it's rough. So. Uh, yeah. and, and the worst part is when you have glimpses of what you could be and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's us now. And you realize, no, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Do you want to talk about teams that make you mad? Like, yeah. Let's, let's, let's get board, real. Man. Let's get real mad yeah. here because, uh, uh, we're going to, yeah, I've been poking the bear with you and I yeah. recognize that. Yep. <laughs> um, so you didn't release the text, which is nice. I no. appreciate that. Uh, no. but, um, which I, you know, it's just, it, it's brutal, but I'm just real mad about my Braves. So I'm going to share a little something that I put together uh, about my Braves sure. and their bullpen, uh, courtesy of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And uh, come here, let's turn the lights down real low, you know, yeah. come close. Let's make this a little personal. <clears throat> yeah. This is my ode to the Braves bullpen. Uh, so this would be me talking to them uh, after, after this season. So, uh, you call yourselves closers? You certainly aren't pals. Because the good news is you're fired. <laughs> the bad news is all you've got just one week to regain your job, starting tonight. <laughs> so, I want you to convince me why you deserve to keep your jobs. Oh, I've got your attention now. Well, good. Because <laughs> we're adding a little something to this month's meeting. <laughs> uh, as you know, first prize was a World Series ring. And anyone want to guess what second prize is? Second prize is uh, <laughs> second prize is a foot in your ass. Third prize is you're fired. So you get the picture. You're laughing now. You got leads, do you? Leads. Well, your teammates that we paid good money to got you those leads. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, cause you are going out. And the Braves are done with that. So. Yeah. Uh, that is my ode yeah. to the closers. I tried to do it the best I could. And uh, yeah, we need a new bullpen, dude. Straight up. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk to the GM, let him know what my thoughts are. I'll make sure I send this over to him, tag him in the video. And uh, yeah, um, we got to get it figured out because we got some good starters. Uh, but uh, they can only do so much when they let, let him pitch five innings. And then you've got basically the rest of you know the game to figure yeah. out how to blow it up so um now that i got that off my chest we know why willie is irate but uh braves sure. are done yeah. brewers are done orioles yeah. are done astros are done the diamondbacks yeah. are complaining and uh, i'm gonna give them some advice that i get from my wife go cry in the shower so nice. um you know, yeah, let's uh on to the teams that remain, right? We've got all four series that are tied one to one, uh, which is kind of interesting. But let's let's start out in 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 the NL with the Mets and the Phillies. They're obviously split one one. Um, but this seems like a hard fought series, and we're only two games in. So Yeah, the Mets should the, the Mets should be up two oh in this series. Yep. The Phillies know it. The Phillies know it. Yeah. Uh um, Castellanos again just comes back and does does his thing. Yeah. When that happened, I immediately checked to see if anybody had died, and that's why he had a walk off. Well, uh, that's had, that's what I got to ask you. Like, are they? Is this going to be a a game changer for them? Like, are they going to be able to cool the Mets off, or is that not going to happen in this series now? Do you remember a lot of the year that I kept talking about the Phillies and how their bullpen is kind of suspect? Mm -hmm. I point to this series as as exhibit A. Like, yeah. Well, their bullpen is a mess. Well, there's a lot of dude, look at the way the Mets have played just in the last week and a half. The amount yeah. of runs they've scored after the eighth like after the seventh inning, right? From the eighth inning on, it's insane, dude. Insane. I can't even believe it. It's as if the other team's like, nope, we're done. We're sending out the JV guys now. 
And the Mets are like, oh, well, we're going to keep our starters in. So I, I don't know what to make of it, man. I, I really don't. The, the Phillies better get it figured out or they're going to have a quick exit from the playoffs. Uh, you know, I just I, I hope they can cool off the Mets. But the Mets just seem like that team you were saying before, like that team of destiny. Yeah. Yeah, they and they again they should be up two nothing in the series. They they squandered that. Mm-hmm. Like they come all the way back. Avientos hits the homer in the ninth. You're like, okay, cool. They tied it up. You're like, great. And then Castellanos, the walk off single, and <laughs> it, it was, I think what was wild about that ninth inning in the bottom of the ninth with Philly is like you you kind of saw their lineup on display. Yeah, because it started with it started with. Uh, Turner, then it was Harper, and then it was Cassianos, and the game was over just like that. Yep. Very and, that's, and that's the thing with the Phillies is why they've won 95 games this year is that lineup. Yeah. yeah. But, like, they just haven't – They they've kind of – since the break, they were kind of just playing 500 ball. Yeah. And I, I think they thought they could just kind of turn it back on, and I don't know if they can. Yeah, that's a really big thing to kickstart. And that was a little bit of what I was hoping for. It just, they kept the lead all year. But that's what I was kind of hoping for when they jumped out to that quick lead in April and May. uh, Was that, oh, maybe they'll kind of falter and burn out. And they did, uh, just not enough. So, but I don't know. We'll see. We're going to have, they're playing tonight, is it? Yeah, they're playing tonight. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see where this series goes because I think, when it goes 2-1, especially in these five-game series, that puts a ton of pressure on the team that loses because then you got to win two in a row. And that's very yeah. difficult to do. And you can't win two in a row uh, at the same time. You've got to take it one game at a time. So it makes it very, very difficult uh, for them to be able to come back. But I don't know. We'll see. Any any predictions on tonight's game for, for them? I mean, Phillies have Aaron Nola going tonight. It was like one of their, their best pitchers. Uh, Mets have Sean Manea, who's is not what you would call good. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to think that Philly has this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Mets because the Mets this is their first home playoff game. That crowd's gonna be nuts. Like, I really think I, I think the Mets win this. After the yeah. Mets, I'm picking Phillies. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, dude, I I just can't. They they piss this me off. This is your nightmare scenario. Yeah, it really is. It really it is. And be because and and we're going to talk about the other National League teams last because I like I really want to let this scenario play out and think about this for a second. So, yeah. um but yeah, let's let's move on to Detroit and Cleveland. They're obviously another another series that split one and one. Uh but Scooball really he's been really good in the postseason so far. He does not look like yeah. it's his first time being there, but he's kind of that ice in his veins, like, no, I'm gonna go out and be exactly who I was all year. Uh and has looked really good. So uh my dad told me he's watching the highlights over and over and over again today. Uh but I mean who are you feeling better about in this series now? Well, I think the thing that's okay. Here's the thing with the Tigers: Scooble can't pitch every game. No, he can't. He can't. Um, that being said, well, he could I try. Maybe he's a Kofax, right? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but what I think is wild is that that three-run homer came off of Emmanuel Clase. Yeah. The best closer in baseball. Yeah. Which I think that like there's kind of a chink in the armor. There's kind of like a dent in the armor now with them, and like. Clace was always like you knew if Clace was coming in, he's getting three outs. Nothing was happening on his watch, and yeah. like it very quickly got to three nothing. You're like, oh, and I don't know. I, I think Detroit, Detroit feels a little team of destiny ish, but like <laughs> I just they don't, they just can't have school pitch every game, and I I think that Cleveland's talent is still gonna win out eventually. Yeah, it's I don't know. Like I was kind of having like like reminiscent scenes of Rocky four where like he, you know, he hits Drago and, uh, and all of a sudden he's like, Oh, he's cut. He's cut. Yeah. And it's, it almost feels that way that like, Oh no. And the, the last thing you want a team like the tigers doing is tasting blood because if they can, it's, it could be dangerous for, for Cleveland going forward. I'll tell you if Detroit wins the next game, I think it's over. And I, 
I, I know that's like a, a crazy and far fetched thing to say because Cleveland does have more talent. But yeah, when you when you're feeling that momentum, it's a real thing, man. It really is. And I I honestly am not that that scared of the Yankees or the Royals. I'll I'll tell you what, if Detroit can somehow get to this, to a game five, they're gonna throw Scoogle out there. Yeah, they will. Because he'll be on five days rest. Yeah. So you, they're gonna throw Scoogle out there. They just have to get it to a game five and let let the guy that has carried them all year do it go again. Into, like that's 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 Detroit's best hope. Oh my god, I'm getting chills thinking about that, dude. That yeah. could be insane. I'll hear my dad yell from Vermont. I, I oh, know, yeah. I know it, man. It will, yeah. it will be nuts. I'll, I'll check in with your dad after the game because, like, I'll I'll be worried for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, the Yankees in, in Kansas City. Uh, I, I thought this was kind of interesting because Chisholm comes out after the game and says the Royals got lucky. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know why you say something like that, but like, I know from th- th- just a history of sports, you don't give a team bulletin board material, and that nah. was the dumbest thing you could have said to, to give them the, the Royals don't need any, uh, you know, intuition or uh, they don't need any more ammunition to be able to go and try to take out the Yankees. Now they've got it there. Yeah. I mean, I, and tomorrow yeah. <laughs> night, eight, three, they have Seth Lugo going for the Royals. Yeah, man. Who's pitched yeah. great this year, right? Like it's, I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's going to be kind of wild with that. Um, are you worried Honestly, for the I'm Yankees or what do you think? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm just really hoping the Yankees lose this series because then Aaron Boone's going to get fired. The Yankees can spend an off season doing dumb Yankees things and overpaying everyone. Yeah. And that, that's just going to make my heart happy. Because like I said earlier, I cannot, I can't watch the Yankees win a world series. Not Mm -hmm. this year. I I can't do it. I can't. Yeah. I I don't want to see it either. Uh, In fact, I I'd be kind of happy with any of the three other teams. I I'm still cooked from almost 30 years ago when they they beat the braves in 96 so i'm just like yeah. i don't know it's yeah. it's not that i dislike them i just don't want to see them win so they also beat them at 99 as well Fun yeah they facts. did I, I don't want to hear that so um yeah i i it just i don't know 96 hurt worse because the braves yeah. were up up in that series up 2-0 yeah and up, up in game three up six nothing yeah yep. i don't want i don't want to hear it man um keep that shit for another day so uh this one i i want i really want to talk about this game actually who do you have winning between the i'm guessing kansas city you're picking oh yeah no i okay even 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 i know like logically the yankees are probably winning this series i just i want kansas city to win this so badly okay I, I do. Um, th- this game I I want to talk about between the Padres and Dodgers just because I uh, I think there's something that really like you brought it up before a few times, but like this is something that needs to be talked about because I feel like it some things just go too far um, mm-hmm. with the Padres and Dodgers, and now obviously they're split just like every other series, but. Um, and I hate talking about this because I don't think it deserves airtime, but it needs to be mentioned because I see this in many sports where it's like, uh, okay, this guy did this to me. Well, I'm going to do this to, to another guy or do this back to him. And it's just this like tit for tat that just keeps ending with everybody getting hurt and someone getting hurt much worse than they really deserve to be. Um, yeah. and what I'm talking about is, you know, Manny Machado throwing towards the dugout. Uh, which it seemed like it was at Roberts. I I don't I don't yeah. know that for sure, but like I just want your your guess on this of what you're thinking, what you're hearing about it, uh, and and what kind of what you saw take place there. Um, first of all, I legally have to say this: fuck Manny Machado. Um, I will say that every day and for the rest of my life for him ruining Dustin Pedroia's career on mm-hmm. that slide. Um, so that being said. Um, again, fuck Manny Machado. Uh, now that I've gotten that out of the way, um, that's uncalled for. Like, I understand that games get chippy Mm -hmm. and there's a way to, there's a way to deal with that. There's a, and and like, and I know it's baseball and I know this is like really messed up to say, but like you just throw at the next batter and you just move on. Like that's, that's an unwritten rule. That's what you do. You hit the next guy with a pitch 
cool. Which even that's uh, gone don't... too far, though. Like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, but what Machado did, that's unacceptable. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I hate Manny Machado. Like, I can remove that aside. Like, date, like there's lucky there's a net up. What yeah. if there wasn't? What yeah. if there wasn't a net up? Like, yeah. Roberts could have been seriously hurt. Yeah. Like, I, I hope... I, I don't think Major League Baseball is going to suspend Machado, but I hope that they do. Because that's not that you can't do that. I I don't know. Like I okay, so it's a it's a sport, and regardless of what people think, it's meant to make money and entertain people, and they not can, at that cost. No, 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 no. But the, but that's the way Major League Baseball is. Even if they want to deny it, it's it's meant to entertain people and to make money, and that's what yeah. it is. But. There is a responsibility to kids, I think, that comes in. And the same thing, I'm going to say the same thing in football with these cheap hits. The same thing in basketball with the ridiculous fouls that have no business being in the sport. You know, the Draymond yeah. Greens, those idiots of the world, right? Like, yeah. it's it's just, there's no, that we have a responsibility to kids to not do it that way. And I, I think that's kind of the way I was raised in that. You don't do that type of stuff in the game. It 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 spoils the game in a way that it should just never be spoiled. And yeah. and when I see something like that, the first thing I think is like they should kick him out of baseball. And yeah, they, and won't. I, they won't. They won't because he no. makes them too much money and all of that stuff. And yeah, it would probably be unfair. But like at the same time, what if something did happen? To Roberts, then what would yeah. they would it still be like? A, oh well, uh, okay, like it was not a big deal or whatever. Like, you know, what what would they say at that point? How would he react to that? You know, because I know he's got a history of not. I'm not going to say a history, but like has at least other events of him not being a good uh, representing baseball the way it's supposed to be represented. So, yeah. like, does something like that need to happen in order for him to? to be handed a suspension or it just, I don't know for me, it just seems petty. I, I think I, I know that major league baseball is like looking at the tapes and, and like, from what has clearly been shown, like he clearly is throwing that ball at Roberts. Yeah. Um, and I just like, if you're, if you're Machado, if you're saying, if you're Machado's teammates, like you've got to be frustrated about that because like San Diego's had a, like this magical run this season and like Machado has a chance to just undo all of that. Yeah. If he gets suspended. Like, yeah. I, I just, he just, he just Jack, like, yeah. I don't know. I, like I just I, remember growing up and seeing pitchers like if they really wanted to mess with a batter or something like that, they'd throw the ball behind them. Right. And and yeah. not fast, but slow behind them to kind of troll them more than anything. Right. But yeah. like this stuff is just I don't know. And it really you're absolutely right, man, when you bring up that like the Padres have something special going right now. Do do you think this is going to have an impact on the series? I think it might. I I think that like, well, I think what's going to happen. I think what's going to happen tonight is, um, I, I think the umpires are going to they, they're going to issue warnings right away. Yeah, because like this someone's going to get hit. I I know that. I know someone's going to well, get the, hit. The yeah. first time somebody gets hit, and I think it's going to be Machado that gets hit. I think. I, I think there's immediately going to be warnings tossed like to, to both sides, both dugouts be like, Hey, you do this again, you're getting thrown out. Well, the, and like, I, I think the umps have got to be really careful and really kind of keep the chippiness down in this, because this is all like you saw with the fans, mm -hmm. like the fans were throwing stuff on the field. Yeah. That's also it, ridiculous. Record, that's not okay. No, not that at all. Not, okay not at all. I, I just, I think that's like the biggest, the dumbest stuff, but I don't know. I, I, and listen, I'm not that familiar with Bueller and stuff. And, and because most of the time he's on the West coast and we can't watch those games, but right. do you, do you see him going out there and throwing at Machado's head? Um, Bueller, when he wasn't hurt, had a hell of a fastball. Um, I, I think that Dave Roberts, I, if this was 20 years ago, Machado for sure would have gotten hit first at bat. Yeah. But I think because Dave Roberts and who he is as an individual, mm -hmm. I think he's going to talk to his team and be like, hey, that's not how we play. Yeah. Enough's enough. We yeah. have a chance to win this series. We need to go out there and take care of business. Let's, and I yeah. think he's going to take the high road. 
Yeah, I, I hope he does, man. And, and like that would I, he'd earn a lot of respect. I, I mean, I think he's a good manager. I think he's a, a better person. I just I, I hope that that's the way he goes, because that's but also that's the way I'm you got to do thing. it. If they do hit Machado, like I wouldn't be surprised. Like no, uh, in, in, according to baseball's unwritten rules, like he kind of has it coming. Like, peg him in the butt or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Who who do you have winning this game? I think it's the Dodgers because yeah. I think there's gonna be so there's just so much talk about this right now that I think it's gonna distract San Diego. Yeah, I I hope it does, man. I I mean, I still have Padres winning this in five. Yeah, for the record. listen. Like, I just don't think that I. I hope they're able to figure it out. Uh, uh, the, the Dodgers are. I, I'd rather not see the Padres win, even though I'd you know, uh, the Dodgers. I don't know. They just have a bunch of guys on their team that I enjoy rooting for because they used yeah. to play for my team. So and Otani too. Like I want to see more of him. So I don't mind yeah. if the Dodgers end up going to the World Series this year. It wouldn't matter to me because I, I just I want to see them continue to play. I want to see Otani on the big stage. I I love seeing that man. It's. It's for me, I feel like it's, it's uh like watching Manning or Brady. And I just, I, I feel like I can't yeah. get enough of that. So, um, all right. Anything else you want to cover in baseball before we wrap up here? No, nah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, uh, uh, like I said, uh, wild postseason so far. Mm-hmm. Um, cool again, that all think... four games, and I know I've said it a few times, all games are split right now. And I think that's so that's the cool. First time, that's the first time that's happened. Really? Then, since the original play started. But like all four series are tied one one. My goodness. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I, overall, I don't care who wins as long as it's not the Yankees. Mm-hmm. That's. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Well, let me ask you something that you do care about. Uh. Sure. Let's transition to fantasy football. Uh. How you feeling about your guillotine league? Uh. Hey. Still surviving. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Doing all right. Sad to uh, see Josh go this week, man. Yeah, and, when you start Deshaun Watson, what do you want? Well, let me like, let me let me just say something. So Josh was one of the top four teams that ended last season. He, I was in the playoffs yeah. with him. The other team that was close to losing going into to last night was the reigning yeah. defending champ last year. Well, I know. So I, if Rashid Shaheed ended up dropping a zero, he was out. And like it's I don't know what when he caught that touchdown pass, I was so pissed. Yeah, that, that that guy's team is like pretty good, and I was like, yeah. "Oh man, oh baby!" Like, yeah, I I really yeah. thought to myself, like, "Oh man, like, is is this something that that could end up happening? Like, could could we end up seeing that? Because like, could he end up yeah. getting getting kicked because of that?" Uh, and it, I wouldn't have been disappointed. Uh, I mean, at all. Uh, you know, to, it, to see that it felt nice to not sweat it out this week. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, it uh, it does feel good when you have have games like that. Uh, I felt good after Thursday night. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm probably not getting cut this week. That felt good. So yeah, if I had started Kyle Pitts, I would have won the Bennett League this week. So still, I'm 0 4 there. Oh, so, man. Love, love that. Listen, it's going to turn and around. I have like, had a great week otherwise. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should have AJ Brown coming back soon. Jameer Gibbs well, is off by now. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I had. I had Detroit and Philly on a bye this week, which kind of hurt my team. Oh, yeah. So you would have been I, lucky to get a win, but it's... I, I started Geno Smith at a pinch, though, and I'm like, I didn't hate it. No, like, no. Dude, he puts up points. Yeah. He puts up points, yeah. so yeah, I felt good. I felt good, and I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens, but now I'm going to pick at some players and see what I can get. So, yeah. Which um, means you're going to have to drop some players, and that's what I like to see. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to drop a few. That'll be okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Now, with trivia, uh, the question we had last week was, when was the last time there was no 100-win team in the MLB postseason? So why don't you let the people know? What do you got? 2014, and the best team in the league that year were the Angels. The one time you got to see Mike Trout in the playoffs. Ah. Three games. Okay. Uh, The year the Giants won it all. Yeah. Uh, I got a new trivia question this week. Uh, And I just think... In, in spirit of uh, Kirk Cuckins throwing for 500 yards uh, this past Thursday, uh, when was the last time Atlanta had a quarterback throw for 500 yards? Ooh, so, because uh, it's it's rare that that happens. Um, but uh, go ahead and drop the answer below in the comments. We'll be back next week with the answer for that. 
Uh, and we're we're going to be giving you some good coverage. It's going to be, a, this is a wrap for this week, but we'll be giving you yeah. some good coverage. We'll be in the midst of the baseball uh, championship series at that point, right? One or two games yeah. in, I think. And uh, yeah. also we'll have some some great NFL coverage to give you. Once, once the World Series kind of goes through and, and baseball wraps up, that's when we'll start getting back into some of the football games and breaking them down uh, for you. So uh, other than that, man, I think that's it for this week. Yeah, it's a good week. Uh, Billy, I love you. Stay safe as always, man. I love you too. And listen, I'm going to work on trying to not to be so mad. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Love yeah, you, bro. I love you too. Peace. Peace.